Hi coders, how's it going? Are you ready to learn some new CSS? In this episode of my CSS animation tutorial series, we will create a Star Wars inspired animated toggle switch button. We will learn how to animate gradients, how to use inset, box shadow and adjacent sibling combinator, and mainly how to style custom input elements and make them consistent across browsers, which can be difficult in CSS unless you know the trick I'm about to teach you. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you like my stuff, also click the bell icon to get notified when I release a new CSS tutorial. So this is the final result, we will create a working checkbox you can use anywhere on your website, stylized as BBA Droid from the new Star Wars trilogy. It is drawn and implemented with pure CSS, no images and no JavaScript this time. You can attach the checkbox functionality to anything. In this example, I will change background color of our website. Also, I attached it to animated canvas effects from my previous tutorials. This will be a quick one, let's start. In index.html, we'll install CSS file and create three main elements. Checkbox, label and section. The actual checkbox, which will be HTML input element with type attribute set to checkbox and ID of BB8. Then we will have label pointing towards it, so set its for attribute to BB8 to point towards the correct ID and class will be BB8 underscore label. In modern web development there is a problem we have to overcome when designing custom input elements, especially checkboxes, radio buttons and input sliders. The problem is we cannot tweak styles of the actual input element because each browser has completely different default implementation and design for inputs, to the point that they attach parent and child elements to it in a way that makes it close to impossible to give custom styles and make this cons consistent across all browsers. Lucky for us, there is an easy workaround. We still get to use the actual input element and get benefits of all its built-in functionality and accessibility features, while we create completely custom style that looks the same in every browser. The trick is to create another element, style it to appear like the checkbox or input we want and use CSS sibling selector to attach it to the actual checkbox functionality. We also hide the checkbox itself visually, but it's working as usual in the background. Important thing to note is you never want to set the input display to none, as that would disable accessibility, keyboard controls and it would make it invisible for screen readers. You want to keep it as part of the element tree, just hide it visually. You can push it outside the border of viewport, or in some scenarios it's even better to make it cover the custom placeholder element and set its opacity to zero, so it's there, but it can be seen. It all depends on specific scenario. So in our markup we have the actual input element with a type of checkbox which we will hide with opacity set to zero and we have a label element which we will style however we want and attach its functionality to the hidden input element. I will not be drawing the droid from scratch in this video as we did it step by step in a previous tutorial. If you skip that video you can watch it now, I explained few things like how to use CSS variables and calc function. If you just want to get the result, you can also copy the code for the droid, link is in the video description. So I just copied the HTML elements we need to create our droid and I put all of them inside the label element. I will also create a section element which will be used as background that changes color. Since we are not using JavaScript in this tutorial and everything is done with pure CSS, we need to make sure that input, label and section are siblings, which means they are on the same level in the HTML structure, so we can change styles of one depending on the events happening on the other. CSS can only see siblings and children. As of now, in 2019, CSS goes down, not up. It cannot see what's happening in its parents' scope. If you need that functionality, it can be easily done with JavaScript. Install CSS file, I set basic reset rules so we don't get any unexpected default margins and paddings in different browsers. I set opacity of the input to zero, which will make it still targetable with keyboard and accessible by screen readers, but invisible in our website layout. Section element will be covering the entire background and I will change its color when we click our checkbox. I position it absolutely to cover the entire screen, top 0, left 0, width 100%, height 100%. Background will be linear gradient to make it more interesting. Linear gradient cannot be easily animated with CSS, so the way around it is with opacity trick. You can animate and transform one gradient into another by animating their opacity values. Later I will set its opacity to 0. Z-index only works on elements with position property declared. This is an absolutely positioned element, so Z-index will work. Transition will be one second. BB8 label element will contain our droid that rolls left and right when we tick the checkbox. For the purposes of this tutorial, I will make it big and place it in the middle of the screen by using the usual absolute positioning trick. Position absolute, top 50%, left 50%, transition 
transform translate minus 50% comma minus 50%. Display will be inline block with 300 pixels, height 160 pixels, background will be linear gradient from purple to orange red. I will also give it box shadow to give it depth effect. I will give the box shadow inset attribute which will make it go inside the box instead of going outside as it usually does. I will also chain another box shadow. You can chain as many box shadows as you like, just separate them with a comma. If you create another box shadow declaration as another line of CSS, that will just override the previous one. So comma separated list is the way to go if you want multiple box shadows on one element. First one will be set to 20, second one to 5. I will give it negative values when we tick the checkbox in a bit to make it look like the shadow follows the droid around. Border radius 150 pixels to make it the same curve as our droid's body. Border will be 1 pixel solid black and cursor pointer. Now I can copy all the styles for our droid from the previous tutorial. I will change it only slightly. I will change position on the droid diff, remove bottom value and give it top and left 10 pixels. I will also give head and body 1 pixel solid black border to match the checkbox and give it more stylized cartoon appearance. You can find the CSS in the video description if you didn't code along with my previous tutorial. Now the tricky part. Plus selector, also called adjacent sibling combinator, is used to target the elements that are placed immediately after the specified element, but are not inside that particular element. We will just use it to animate section and label element whenever checkbox gets ticked. You can see whenever we tick the checkbox, a couple of things happen. Inset box shadow is moving from left to right along with the droid. Since the droid's body is rotating, but the head isn't, I cannot just rotate the entire diff with the class of droid. I will have to create two separate declarations, one to move the entire droid and another one to rotate the body. You can also see the eyes and the antennas on the head are moving to make it appear like droid is turning its head around. And the final thing we animate is the background color, which we achieve by stretching and animating the section element. I will need six declarations, all of them will trigger when the input with the type of checkbox gets checked. First I go input type equals checkbox colon checked plus, which is our adjacent sibling combinator that will target the next sibling label and I will set box shadow values from plus to minus. I will also set transition property on all elements to one second. Second thing we need to animate is the droid. So again, when the checkbox gets checked, we travel to its sibling label using plus selector. And when we find it, we go inside the label and look for an element with the class of droid. Once the selector finds it, it applies transform translate x 140 pixels, which will move it to the right along the horizontal x axis. It's always better to transform element rather than to animate its left and right values as that would cause DOM reflow, which will cause performance issues in bigger projects. Opacity and transforms are the safest properties to animate or transform, as they don't force the browser to recalculate how all the other objects and elements stack together. Now I can animate the droid's body, I will just rotate it 360 degrees. Radios will go 30 pixels to the left. You can see I was bad and I actually set my transitions earlier to animate the left value, which I just told you is a bad practice. I will remove the word left here, which will make the transition to apply to everything, including the transform property. I set eyes to translate x 30 pixels, so move 30 pixels to the right along the horizontal x axis. and I animate opacity on section element to 1 to make our linear gradient background visible. I have many more tutorials on the channel. Check out my CSS animations playlist and vanilla JavaScript and HTML canvas series. 
Thanks for watching, don't forget to like the video, it really helps me a lot. If you have any questions or feedback, you can leave your comments below. See you next time. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>